what is going on guys this is mac for b4yb welcome back to the channel in today's video we're taking a look at the hp pavilion 15 gaming laptop now my last video was about this laptop and this is sort of like a follow-up video taking a look at more details a couple of things that i missed out in the first video and just like my experience overall after after having more time using this thing so let's get into it so the first thing i want to talk about is the display it's a full hd ips display it's only 60 hertz but at this price point it is a budget gaming laptop so we have to set our expectations you're not going to get the high refresh rate monitors that you see in newer gaming laptops but it does a pretty good job and at least it's ips so that means the color reproduction is pretty good viewing angles are good and it's actually really good for um, photo and video editing now i always recommend people calibrate their screens and after doing some calibration on mine tweaking it to my liking trying to get the most accurate color um it turned out to be really good i actually use lightroom a lot and edit photos on this it's a pretty good experience the hinge is still you know kind of weak like i was saying in the first video it creaks and you can kind of hear how cheap the plastic feels uh it is what it is speaking of plastic the top part the top lid i really just hated so much i ended up plastic dipping the whole top layer and i didn't really do a good job because it was like the first time i ever used plastic dip but yeah i like it you know it's, it's visible with the scratches um but even without the plastic dip it was visible with it anyways so this way it kind of protects the top layer and i can just peel it off when i'm done all right, more on to the good things, more on, more on to the good things. So as I said in the first video, I really like the keyboard. I think that the keyboard was actually pretty good. It does have a numpad, which is really awesome. If you use Excel a lot and you need to crunch numbers, you got to have the numpad, man. You got to. The backlighting doesn't give you any um, different levels. It's either you have it on or you have it off. And that kind of sucks because I like to work in the dark a lot. And this brightness is just fixed, so it's pretty bright when everything is really dark and very dim. And this ends up just being a, an eyesore, so I end up shutting it off. What about the camera, the webcam? <laughs> the webcam is... Well, let me just show you so you guys can see what it looks like. This is what the webcam looks like. Um, I do have some lighting in my room. I have lighting on right now. I have one key light, and then everything else is just background lights and... This is what it looks like. It's it's pretty pretty crappy. It's pretty crappy like all the other laptop webcams out there. They just suck and I really don't know why that is, but that's what it is. The speakers are really good. They're banging Olsen speakers. I love how really nice they sound actually. They have really nice highs and mids. It is pretty weak and kind of lacking in bass, but there's no subwoofer placement is just right here the top deck of the laptop and the speaker placement's not bad i think it's a smart place to put it not behind the laptop or underneath it it's just right here so this the sound comes right at you and it sounds pretty good thermals still still kind of suck even after everything i've done even after replacing the thermal paste even after undervolting the cpu i've undervolted mine to once negative zero one point six five and i still have thermal throttle with the stress test that i've tried but it definitely helped out from when i first got it this may be a case to case basis i'm definitely going to email hp's support and see if maybe it's just a problem with my unit but if this was my only gaming machine i would definitely consider maybe something else now it's time for some benchmarks. I did most of the benchmarks using some synthetic benchmarks and some video games. I recorded using fraps and tested out um, my benchmarking that way for the games. And then of course the synthetic benchmarks gave me the score through the results. And so far I can say that the performance was pretty much what I expected. It did perform pretty well in the lighter games like CSGO. And it's really well suited for a couple of games that are light like that. Vermintide crashed when I tried to run it at high. Multiple times it crashed. But running it at medium, it seemed to work. I don't know what the problem is there, if that's a driver issue or what. But that's my experience with it. Apex Legends ran really well um, after all the tweaks that I've done. 
uh, keep in mind it's in custom because the game is just locked like that I can't change the settings for whatever reason and Fortnite it ran really well since it's a lighter game obviously if you dumb down the settings you get a better frame rate so I don't recommend running it in epic anyways but uh, if you're curious if you can max it out that's what you get so that's it for the benchmarking now we go on to showing you guys how you can replace the thermal paste yourselves or just show you guys how you can open up the laptop if you guys want to get access to the upgrades i do want to leave a disclaimer this is all being done at your own risks i don't take any responsibility if you damage or void your warranty so first things first you're going to need some tools so make sure you have a phillips screwdriver just like this one Make sure that you have your thermal paste. I like to use Arctic Silver 5. This is easily bought on Amazon. I'll leave everything in the description. And this is a little spudger tool that kind of helps you pry open the back panel. All right, so the first thing you gotta do is unscrew all the screws at the bottom panel. As soon as you're done with that, make sure you put all the screws somewhere safe where you don't lose them. You start prying it open using this tool, the blue little spudger prying tool now this part is a little tricky and it can be a little difficult to pry it out you may have to use some force but don't be afraid to you're not gonna snap anything here I've tried oh I also want to mention if you don't have a prying tool like this you could use a guitar pick now as soon as soon as you pry out the bottom shell all you have to do now is unscrew the fans and then get them out of the way of the heat sinks now after you unscrew the fran yeah, the fans. After you've unscrewed the fans, now you need to unscrew the CPU cooler from the motherboard. So the heat pipes, unscrew those, and all you have to do now is detach it from the motherboard and remove it out of the way. Now, the next step is you have to remove the thermal paste that's on the CPU and GPU, and that's on the heatsink. So you're going to need some Q-tips and you're going to need a thermal cleaning solution. Now, if you don't have a thermal cleaning solution, rubbing alcohol or isopropyl alcohol should work fine. I've used it before. Now you just got to make sure that the cotton buds are wet and clean off all that excess gunk. And as soon as your CPU, GPU are clean and the heat sink is cleaned up, take the Arctic Silver 5. Now I'm not going to show you in this video because I've already done it with mine. But if you guys know how to apply thermal paste, it's a pretty simple solution. All you need to do is apply just a little bit, sort of like a pea drop. Is, it, is that a thing, a pea drop? A small piece of thermal paste goes a long way. Once you've done that, don't screw anything up. Just place the heat sink back on top of the CPU and GPU. Align them, make sure the screw holes are aligned, and screw everything back together. Then you can screw the fans back in and now you can close up the laptop all right guys so that's the video and i hope you guys enjoyed it or found it useful if you did make sure you like this video share it with your friends subscribe to the channel if you want to see more content i hope we continue to grow this community that we have and yeah i'm really enjoying this once again thank you guys for watching i'll see you guys in the next one